Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of TMINUS 365. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering a high-level overview of Privilege Identity Management, or PIM, and how it interacts with GDAP, Granular Delegated Admin Privileges. If you've not watched my video on what GDAP is, or if you're not familiar with GDAP, I'd highly recommend checking that out first, just so this video makes a little bit more sense. Today, I'm going to be showing you how these two solutions uh, interact with each other, and then we'll be walking through actually demoing this out and setting this up within an Azure Active Directory environment. So PIM has been around for a few years now with Microsoft as far as the solution goes and many of you may be familiar with a PIM or PAM solution if you're more security conscious. At a very high level though, if you're not familiar, we have some common terms here that can really show the value of this as a security solution. And so the first of which is JIT or just in time access and the second is JEA or just enough access. And so with this solution, you're able to elevate your privileges into an Active Directory environment and in the future with GDAP relationships, as I'll show here in a minute, to basically provide just in time, just enough access into certain elevated workloads that you may not need perpetual access to. And ultimately, that's helping reduce your attack surface within these environments so that if a user got compromised, they don't have access to the keys of the kingdom. And a good example of that is the global administrator role that basically has all the rights into the tenant and we don't want that to be a perpetual role that somebody has or many people have within the organization. Now when we talk about how this relates to GDAP relationships and give an example here of just establishing a relationship with a customer. So you have your customer here and you're going to go ahead and establish a GDAP relationship here in the future and if you watch my last video you know that when you do so, you're basically saying, hey, I need access to these certain workloads. And when I say workloads, it's really the admin centers or rights within these admin centers that you need. So some of these things that you may attach on is like the Exchange Admin Center, the Security Admin Center, Global Reader, and User Administrator. Now this is just a basic example. Obviously, you're going to have more rights and workloads associated here. But this is just showing you how you can partition these workloads or all the roles and rights uh, that you would want to attach to a GDAP relationship. From there, as you again saw in the last video, you're then partitioning these workloads across one or many security groups. And so if you're a smaller organization, you may only have one security group and you associate all the workloads to that security group. But as you grow, you should look to partition these out into various security groups to ultimately stratify those permissions and truly promote a model of least privilege. So here you may say that this security group has access to the Exchange Admin Center. Uh, this one has access to the Security Admin Center. And then you have this one which is Global Reader and User Administrator. And then from there you have your technicians that might be associated or members of the security groups here. And so you may have it so that your tier one technicians always have access to this security group because they're doing a lot of user administration through move out changes and things like that. But then they may need temporary access at certain times into the security admin center. So this is something where they don't access this workload often, but it's temporary access they may need occasionally to help them work case or ticket within the environment. So this is where PIM can come into play really well, is providing a model of least privilege and, and really giving them a place to elevate their access temporarily but not have perpetual access. And so when we do this here, we can give this a PIM level role as far as the security group being a PIM level group. And with that, you'll find this term very common when you start interacting with it, which is eligible. And so essentially here, they become eligible members. You can make them eligible members of the security group so that they can elevate their privileges temporarily to access the security group and have access into this security admin center workload. And so this is the power of PIM and giving you that permission to give them flexibility in their, their workloads and also increase the security because when we take a look at this example of them walking through this, you may have your tier one they submit this request and you can decide here again this is how granular they can get with the security permissions you can decide here whether or not this is going to be approved or denied 
They could just say that you approve it automatically. They just request it and you can log why they need that access. But then if it's approved or if they go ahead and you automatically approve that, they can then select the hours of which they have access into the security group. So that can be time bound. You can set what that uh, level of access is. It could be eight hours, it could be four hours, whatever they need to actually complete their work. And then you also have an audit trail where they can document why they need that level of access and the time of which they requested it. So again, this is all just increasing the security and your best practices as far as how you're doing your processes. And ultimately, that's, that's a huge thing now with how we have delegated access into our customer environments. And at the end of the day, um, once that's gone through and they get it approved, they'll have access to the security group two, which is the one where the security admin center rights are all there. And so they can elevate their privileges, they can enter that workload, they can perform their task, and then their permissions are again stripped in the sense that they're no longer part of the security group and they no longer have access to that workload. This is extremely important because if this user was to get compromised here, uh, this level of access here that they have across the board is eliminated and truly they just have these level of roles which is perpetual here within the tenant. So I think it's important to note uh, when you're trying to plan this out within your organization, you document what levels or what workloads the technicians are accessing today, um, what are most common for them that they may need perpetual rights versus the ones that they don't access frequently where you could bundle in PIM to promote a model of lease privilege and just keep increasing your security within these tenants as well too. Um, the other thing to consider here is obviously higher level roles. Like if you decide in GDAP that you're going to continue to access global admin rights, um, as far as the right capability goes there, that is something that I would definitely uh, bind into PIM and make an isolated security group just because nobody should need that level of permission perpetually across your customer environments. It is something that you would want to gate behind PIM in the future. So with that, again, I'm a very visual person, so let's dive into the Azure Active Directory portal here, and I'll walk you through actually setting up this PIM relationship with GDAP. Okay, so I'm here within an Azure Active Directory environment connected to my partner center environment as an indirect reseller. Keep in mind, like I mentioned earlier, you have to have Azure AD P2 to have access to PIM. And so this is something that's being offered right now for free for indirect resellers. And I'll link that below in the supplement guide that I give you that's part of my blog. But within here, what you're going to want to do is go into the group section here. And one of the first steps, and I've created ones in the past here uh, to just demo this out, but we're going to go ahead and create a new group here. And you can watch this all the way through and determine how you want to roll this out. It does have to be a security group here. You can enter the group name. So maybe we'll just say this is the EAC group. And under here, you need to select the roles here. So you want to select and toggle this on to yes, Regity roles can be assigned to this group. You don't have to add any owners, members, or roles at this particular point in time. You can make all of this eligible through the PIM process. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this here. You can create members obviously and owners that you see fit that would be more of the permanent level access as perpetual access versus just setting up eligible members that can grant themselves access with PIM. So once this actually propagates here we'll have our EAC group we can click into it here. Underneath activity you'll see privileged access here and so we'll click on that and then we'll click on enable privileged access here. From there, you'll see your active assignments, which I didn't add anybody as active, so that's why we don't see anybody there. We can click into eligible then, and this is where you can add the users or members in your organization that you want to have as far as the member role or owner role for eligibility. In most cases, you're gonna select member here, and then you're gonna go ahead and select what you want here as far as the members goes. I can select here myself to be eligible member of this group. I can click on next. And then you can also here, if you wanted to state this, you can state a maximum eligible duration. This is just set in place so that you temporarily review these access rights 
They have access reviews built into Azure DP2, which you can look into separately, but by minimum you have a year to keep this eligible and then you need to review access again and renew it after that point in time. So I can go ahead and assign it here for that particular abuser and now they show up as eligible as well too. So all of that's good as far as setting up the group and then enabling eligibility for certain members. Let's go ahead and pivot now into Partner Center and go ahead and assign this group to a particular customer with the GDAP relationship already established. Okay, so I'm here in Partner Center under Customers and then I went under Administer here on the left to get to the Granular Administration section. Recall, if you haven't looked into GDAP or you haven't set up GDAP relationships, check out my previous videos on how to do that. Kind of assuming in this video that you already understand that, that particular process. I've got my GDAP relationship here that is active. And again, I'm not going to walk through how I went and did that. It is something I show in a previous video. But here, again, is where we add our security groups. We select the roles in which we want to partition into those security groups. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Add. I have my EAC group here, which was created, and I want to select that one. And then I want to grant them access into the Exchange Administrator workload. So I can click on Save there. And now that's in a pending state. It takes like 30 seconds to actually propagate. And you can click on Done here, and then that'll be active. And if I click back in here, this is also now in an active state. So the final piece here, I just want to log in as one of these users and show you how to go ahead and activate your membership and what that process actually looks like as well too. Okay, so I'm here and I'm signed in as the NROS user as well that we added as an eligible member. Sign into aad.portal.azure.com. You can go under all services and you can either search for it here or if it's more frequent, you could even start it to your side dashboard here as far as your favorites goes. Was Azure AD Privilege Identity Management is what you'll click into. And here you can click into the Privilege Access Groups here, and you can see the groups that we've set up here in the past. As far as if you're part of that group or if you're a global admin, you can see all the groups here. When you click into My Roles, you have your eligible assignments or active assignments. So there's both the Azure AD roles and then the Access Groups as well too. And in here, I can see that I have eligible assignments as a member to both of these groups here. And this is the one that we just did for the EAC group. So we can go ahead and click on activate here. And within here, you can select the custom activation start time. If you need it at a certain period, you just wanna get ahead of when you'll actually need access. You can set the duration of which you're going to need access as well too. And then you have to provide this justification reason based off of the settings within these in um, this particular group itself. And I can show you and will show you at the end of this just how we go about doing that as far as changing those settings. And I'll just put in testing for the reason here and I'll click on activate. So this goes through this process of actually elevating your role. And in this section, mostly it's just obviously adding you as a member to that group. And then it automatically refreshes your session so you don't have to sign out and sign back in. Um, if you've used PIM for a while, you know that was a, a larger pain point for a while until they actually fix that. You just automatically refresh your session with the new permissions. So I'll wait for this to complete. And when that's done, you'll refresh our session here. So now once it refreshes here, I can click on refresh again and I can see my active assignment and it says he Look in and see your active roles. So I can see my active assignments here under this tab and I can deactivate it if I got done early with those assignments. But then if I pop back into the partner center environment, this is where I can now go under service management for this particular customer. And I can go in and I can actually access the exchange admin center here. Normally, if I wasn't part of this group, I'd get a big fat error message about permissions and not being able to access this workload. But as you can see, I'm redirecting within the customer environment here within their Exchange Admin Center. So that's the fundamental basis of GDAP with PIM and setting that up within the tenant. You obviously can partition that across multiple different security groups and set a little bit more granular settings as well too. So let's finalize the video with just checking that out for a quick second.
Okay, so in here back within the PIM environment, if you're a global admin or you're managing this on behalf of your organization, you'd be able to go under the manage section to privilege access groups. And then you'd be able to click on this group and under here you can click on settings to define all the granular settings you want for this group as well. And in here I can see I can designate settings for both members and owners. So you can even get as many more granular as you want here. And there's all these various settings that you can customize as well here too. So you may want to customize the activation duration, like how long they can have this role. You can require justification from certain approvers so that they have to have a certain person within the organization approve that request. Um, you could have required ticket information on activation. This is another one that you might want to relate to any service ticket within your PSA. And then you have the ability to select who those approvers are. There's some additional ones here, and I'm not going to go through all of these settings here. You can obviously check them out on your own. But there's some other ones here that might be uh, good to have or include, like requiring MFA to activate the assignment. So just kind of an additional layer of security that can be more self-service, that doesn't require the approval. They're just uh, applying additional control, much like you can do with conditional access policies. So again, that's everything that I wanted to cover in today's video on PIM and GDAP. Hope that was helpful in understanding how these things work together and setting this up within Azure Active Directory. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below in the comment section. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the OSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.